Uh, there is a difference in Q-Show, and it's why people subscribe to the YouTube channel here, as well as uh, subscribe to Q-Show.com. Q-Show.com's been around since 2000, uh, and before that, uh, we were on another website uh, uh, from 1995, explaining Q-Show in uh, real terms. Um, now, there are some people that are teaching uh, pressure points out there, and I want to show you that the pressure points isn't exactly what makes uh, Q-Show work. Now, um, not only from the fact standpoint that um, pressure points are on fascia compared to nerve structures, all right, but that's another point entirely. Uh, for example, uh, you, you're thinking that all pressure points are going to be equal, and they're not, okay? There's, for example, you have what's called the mental nerve here, and you have what's called the stomach five here for pressure point um, uh, tacticians or people that use the pressure points to explain Q-show. And they think they're about the same thing. It, uh, it's no matter you hit this one, it's just as powerful as this one. And that's not true. And this is what leads to um, uh, a mediocre skill level. For example, if you know what's going to be a better target, wouldn't you want to target that one, okay, compared to the other? Now, later on in this film, I'm going to show you an anatomical breakdown of these two targets and um, uh, describe why the other one's better than the other one. Um, but for right now, let's just go into the um, ballistic shots. Okay, so you have the mental nerve right here. This is much more powerful than what they call the stomach five. This mental nerve, MHN18, uh, is uh, a good target for them. It's also stomach five is a good target for them. However, they are not the same thing. You also have other people out there, proponents, saying, yeah, you hit this triangle and it's the same thing. It's not, okay? And there's major differences and there's major reasons for it. And it's all anatomical by nature. And how the, the body's functionality and physiology is changed by attacking these two nerves. Now, as an example, this is a facial nerve. Okay, a branch of the facial nerve. Facial nerve stems from behind the ear, goes from the neck to behind the ear, and it branches across the face, uh, much like a root system. All right. Now you have a branch that comes down low, you got one under the zygomatic arch, and you have little fibers off of that. This one is the mental nerve, a completely different nerve. It runs all inside the jaw, not on the um, just underneath the skin or muscle, it's behind the bone. All right, it has a little exit point called the mental foramen. Now that mental foramen is where that nerve exits. It looks again like a root system. So everybody looks at the two nerves and they'd say, hmm, about the same thing. Again, they're not. All right, for example, and we'll go into this in detail in the anatomical um, portion of this film. All right, the facial nerve is a secondary nerve. It's not a primary nerve. It hooks into the spine, which hooks into the brain. Okay, much different. The mental nerve is on the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve goes directly into the brain stem. Two differences right there, okay? Second set of differences is if you're striking the facial nerve as an example, you have a good hit, you're gonna rock the body back, stretch the neck, stretch more nerves, you're gonna cause a little dysfunction, a little dizziness just because of the rapid motion of the head, all right? But it's not as powerful as the mental nerve. And the reason is, is if you have the mental nerve, the mental nerve is going to twist the neck as well as dip the chin, okay? So that's going to um, attack more nerves. It's going to stretch more nerves, and it's going to go right to the brain stem. The brain stem is also going to get more jarred because of the rapid acceleration of the head side to side, also tilting. So again, two reasons why one target would be better than the other. And um, from a standpoint of striking, um, you could strike them with whatever weapons you want. You can use a knuckle, you can use an iron bone hand, you can use the iron sword hand, you could use a headbutt. Now here's the, here's the caveat. And this is where you, most people, again, you can separate good Q-show from uh, mediocre Q-show. Okay, you could headbutt these two targets. Now many would think since you could hit this one, it has a greater effect, you could headbutt it and it will cause a greater effect, and it won't, okay? When you headbutt, what's going to happen is since you have hard against hard, the head's going to jerk away so fast, yes, you'll get a good effect, 
not as powerful as if you stuck with this one because you're going to hit that nerve and it's going to be backed up and you're going to compound that uh, uh, it's not compounded but well compound the force that goes into it because it's not going to back away as readily all right so again there's two different dynamics on the mental nerve compared to the facial nerve or ment uh, mhn 14 compared to the um, stomach 5 area all right this is why people come to qshow.com they come to this um, youtube channel and they go to the subscription and the, the seminars to learn the real deal Okay, you don't want to be working with pressure points thinking it's all the same. If your instructor can't uh, discern the difference between the two, then they're lacking in knowledge. Okay, and if they're lacking in knowledge, they're obviously lacking in skill. Okay, not that they're not good proponents of Kyushu, not that they're good proponents of martial arts. They are lacking what they could be. And because they're lacking in what could be for them, you're going to be lacking in what could be for you. So stay tuned here, watch this uh, anatomical um, study here as we poke around the nerves in the neck and show you um, a more three-dimensional look at these nerves. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button if you like this information, and come on over to QShow.com and join the Platinum Service. You won't regret it. There's over 90 films. You have access to them all. Really deep information that's never been published in uh, public before. So uh, come on over. See you then. For a fisticuff position where the guy kind of tries to take a swing, if he comes in slow with this just to show you, instead of trying to block the arm or stop the arm in some particular way where the bigger individual will probably win over with the strength factor, all I need to do is simply avoid it and strike down onto the mental nerve. Again, I could be saying stop at this time. So as he comes in, I just say stop. And you'll see that this dysfunction, sorry about that one, that one gave him a headache. Okay, Okay. here we're going to take a look at the um, anatomical structures that I've been discussing. Here we have the, um, the facial nerve, ties right back into the um, ganglia right back here, and you can see how it just boils right down from the peripheral nervous system, uh, cranial nerves, and down. Okay, um, at, now right here we can see that it's exposed. You can see that it's exposed here, but not here so much, and not here, so that's why we hit in more specific locate, uh, locations. Now here is the muscle that's overlapping it right back and through here, and this is the platysma muscle, okay? And uh, here we have the facial nerve, okay? We have this other muscle group right in through here, uh, but they get in the way. Now let's get rid of the muscles here for a second, okay? We can see this facial nerve is big. It's on the outside, very easy to target. Again, right in through this area is going to be your best bet. Down here, it's right at the edge of the bone, but up here, it's like right in the middle of that jawbone. Now, here we have the um, mental nerve. Okay, mental nerve is a part of the trigeminal nerve. Um, this is uh, more of a superficial nerve, and the mental nerve, as I discussed, is a, a deeper nerve that goes right into the brain stem itself. All right, so let's trace back uh, a little bit more on the facial nerve here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. We're going to follow this up here, and you can see how it follows right in through here. We'll zoom just a little bit more and see where it enters in through the brain. Uh, let's go on. Yeah, let's take a look at it right here. Okay, so we can see that it enters the brain uh, right back there on the, the, uh, the, the spinal cord uh, a little bit more. All right, now let's take a look at the mental nerve in comparison. Okay, we have the mental nerve here. Now, if we look under the jaw, it looks like there's a whole bunch of um, nerves here, but this is a tongue nerve. This is not a, the mental nerve. Okay, as a matter of fact, uh, extrinsic muscles of the tongue. So where is that nerve? If it comes out of a hole, like right here, here's this, the mental foramen, and here's the, um, the mental nerve, but it doesn't, it isn't this nerve and it isn't this one. This one's another tongue nerve, okay? Um, so where does it go? Well, it hides inside here. So here is the, um, the trigeminal nerve, okay? And it's a mixed um, motor sensory nerve, okay? And let's follow that out. We can see it right there. 
So let's trace it back in just a little bit more. All right, here we have um, the branch as it's going back into the main plexus here. Okay, and you can see here's the ganglion. Okay, and let's see if I can get a clearer view here. Yep. And here we go. And uh, didn't catch it. There it is. Okay, there's the um, cervical uh, vertebrae uh, or cervical nerve number five, trigeminal nerve, and it, it attaches right into the pons here. Okay, and that's your brain stem, not into the um, the spinal cord, but into the brain stem. Whereas the facial nerve um, ties more into the um, the spinal cord. Let's see, yep, you can see that right in through there. That's the spinal cord down there, as opposed to the um, pons right up into here, or the brain stem. Okay, so um, it's a much more powerful. Uh, nerve and it shakes the head uh, a lot more dizzies the head a lot more because it's a, a more direct nerve right into the brain facial nerve is uh, very powerful also but it is once removed so it goes into the central uh, nervous system or the spinal column and then into the brain as opposed to just going directly to the brain so again the mental nerve here is a much more powerful um, uh, nerve to attack also, um, you can see the spacing. Now, if you hit here and down and in at the um, correct trajectory you're supposed to hit, you'll see that it's going to be backed up by the rest of the neck. And let's get the muscles back in through here. Get rid of that stuff. Okay, you can see all the neck muscles protecting it. Okay, uh, right back in through here. And uh, you can't take away one muscle too bad, but um, it's got a whole bunch of muscle uh, systems right in through here. If you strike here, it's going to be more free-floating. It will um, not only twist the head, but it'll slant the head, and it will attack the brain pawns. Let's get in there. Uh, there's the trigeminal, okay? And it will um, attack this um, brain stem right here, uh, and that will have a much more powerful effect. But as I said, um, the head's not going to have as much of an effect here as it would here because of the bracing and the give. So you have to learn how to attack and how to read um, the anatomy to see what your best attack is going to be. Okay, uh, everybody would think, okay, they're in the same location. Well, it, it might be uh, the same effect, but it really isn't. Now here you have an added benefit. You're probably going to clip um, both nerves. You're probably going to clip the, um, the well, let's get the nerve instead of the bone, the, the, the facial nerve here and also the, um, the, the trigeminal nerve or the mental nerve right in through here. So you're going to get two nerves in, as compared to one. So this is a far better target. But if um, you don't know the difference in uh, what they're affecting, uh, you can't make it the best you can make it. Okay, And if your instructor doesn't know, well, then you get the same um, difficulty. You, you can't really like get to your best if you don't know how it anatomically uh, fits in to the brain, the nervous system, the functionality, and the anatomy of the human as compared to just uh, taking it as a pressure point and striking it. And again, remember, let's get the muscles back here. Okay, this isn't really great uh, muscle structure. It's the best we got, and it's pretty darn good, I must admit. This program is um, really awesome. It doesn't cost too much money. Um, but uh, we can swing this baby around. We can't pose them, but we can get uh, pretty deep into the anatomical structure. And I like this a lot better than the uh, anatomical books, to tell you the truth. It has the same amount of information, a little less confusing to use. And, of course, you can use it in 3D and, and swing the person or the, the model around so you can see how it lays in the body and how it innervates. Okay, uh, let's bring back the blood systems. You can see also, let's get rid of the muscle here for a second. Okay, you got a little blood vessel out here, but this would not be a blood knockout here. Um, you have a little blood vessel. It's not really major. Now, on the stomach five, this is why some people black out when they get hit in the side of the jaw. Okay, they get the electrical flash when they hit up here, and they get the, um, the dimming uh, of sight here. Okay, again, with the muscles, you can see that it's not really protected. Let's get rid of the muscles again, and you can see if you hit it right at the base of the teeth, you're going to get the best effect for um, 
the blacking out of the person or the lowering of the blood pressure. If you hit in through here, it's going to be a 50-50 shot what you're going to get, the white flash or the um, blackening of the site or the um, blood pressure dropping. So uh, a little tough here. Okay, and uh, typically um, when you strike uh, this, you're still going to get a white flash, but occasionally uh, people hit uh, deep enough to get that blackening of the eyesight and the blood pressure drop. So that's another look uh, anatomically about the power of these two points and how they uh, differ and how you can get differing effects with them. And this is something you should know and you need to know if you're going to reach your prime or your optimal uh, ability and skill with the Q show. If you were thinking, let's just go back out here for a second. Let's zoom in here. Okay, we'll put the muscle back on the guy. Okay, if you're assuming that you're hitting a pressure point, okay, uh, you, you see this underlying structure and you're looking at that underlying structure rather than just a, a dot on uh, the person's skin. Okay, you would never understand fully what's going on as you would if you um, looked anatomically. And no, you don't stick a needle in uh, stomach five uh, or a nerve, uh, as they would call stomach five. Uh, you wouldn't stick a needle there, and you definitely wouldn't stick a needle in a vein or an artery, okay? Um, you'd cause the person to scream here, uh, so not very soothing, so it's not the pressure point. You wouldn't stick them here because they'd bleed in these vessels. So again, you're going to be working on the muscles right at the end of the musculature, all right? And that's why um, Q-Show really is not pressure points, okay? Q-Show is real anatomical structures. So I hope you enjoyed this film. Hope you know the difference and uh, you can work with it and better your skills and understand truly what Q-Show is and can be for you. Thanks for watching.